Over the past two years, shortages on Raspberry Pis have been a pretty big issue in the 3D printing space. Yes, Clipper firmware can be run from most Linux computers, but there's no denying the convenience and ease of use that a Pi can offer. Due to this, we've seen the release of multiple Pi alternatives and Clipper-specific boards. Some contain both the MCU and SOC or system on chip, so you get Linux for Clipper hosts from the same board that connects to your printer's hardware. Bigtree Tech has released a handful of these alternatives, with the most recent being the Bigtree Tech Pi 1.2, which they were kind enough to provide to the channel for testing. Coming in the same form factor as a Pi 3 or Pi 4, this alternative has some advantages that might make it the ideal choice for your clipper conversion or printer build. In this video, we'll go over the board's specs, take a look at its various connections, and go through the process of getting clipper host installed on it. So, with all that being said, and without further ado, Let's get right into today's video. Starting with what is powering the Pi 1.2, we have an H616 ARM Cortex A53 processor at 1.5 GHz and 1 GB of DDR3L RAM, which is pretty similar to the official Raspberry Pi 3B. Physically, the Pi 1.2 is the same form factor as a standard Pi, but much of its connectors are mirrored. Going around the board, we have 40 color-coded GPIO pins. This makes it much easier to identify which pin is which when connecting headers or cables to them. BigTreeTech has a nice graphic in their GitHub that breaks down each of the pins on their 1.2 board and compares it to their CB1 or the Raspberry Pi CM4. Behind the GPIO pins, there is also a dedicated PWM port for connecting a fan. Next to those GPIO pins is an IR receiver, and if you're wondering why there is an IR receiver on this board, that is a fantastic question. Just like with their Pad 7, they advertise this as a Pi replacement, so although most of us are likely going to be using this as a clipper board in place of a Raspberry Pi, there's nothing stopping you from using this for any other project that you would use an official Raspberry Pi for, as long as it has the I.O. and specs that suit your needs. There are four USB 2.0 ports and an RJ45 Ethernet port that supports up to 100 megabits per second. On the side opposite of the GPIO pins, we have a dedicated CAN bus port, micro HDMI, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and a USB-C connector. We'll touch more on that CAN bus port in just a moment here. On the final side, there is an SPI connector for a screen, ADXL 345 SPI connector, and power in screw down terminals. On the bottom, we have our 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi module where we can attach the included antenna along with the micro SD card slot. One really nice convenience of this board over an official Raspberry Pi is just how easy it is to power it. A standard Raspberry Pi requires five volts to power the board, which isn't really standard as far as the power supply used on most all 3D printers. So that means you'll either need a five volt power supply, some kind of a buck converter, or a specific board that can output five volts to power your Raspberry Pi. On the Bigtree Tech Pi 1.2, you have two options. The screw down terminals can take 12 or 24 volts to power the Pi, or you can use the USB-C port with five volts like you would do on a official Raspberry Pi as well. If you are going to power the board over USB-C, you'll need to make sure that the jumper is installed on the two pins next to it. As mentioned, there is a dedicated CAN bus port on the BigTree Tech 1.2, but it does require a special U2C module that needs to go onto the board in order to enable that CAN bus functionality. This little board connects to the Pi 1.2 through two headers and contains the 120 ohm resistor and an STM32 G0B1 MCU. When using that U2C board, it does take the place of one of the USB 2.0 ports on this board. The main benefit of going with this over the external U2C board is the space you save since it doesn't really expand on the board's footprint. If you're planning on running Clipper Screen, you have two options which are to connect your screen to this board over SPI or using the micro HDMI, so an HDMI connection. Just like when running the CB1, DSi is not supported on the Pi 1.2. As for the board image, it uses the exact same one as the BigTreeTech CB1, and the setup process is going to be identical. I'll have a link in the description over to the GitHub repository where you can download the image file. There are two options for the images. One of them is minimal and the other is Clipper. I recommend downloading the Clipper version just so that you get everything you'll need to be up and running. For flashing the micro SD card, you can use either Belena Etcher or the official Pi Disk Imager. I ended up going with the Pi Disk Imager, but the process is almost identical for both. 
Select the image file that you downloaded along with the memory card that you want to flash as your target and click write. I did try to set both the Wi-Fi credentials and the SSH credentials in the Pi Imager under the settings menu, which didn't work, so we're going to cover that next. Once the image is flashed and verified, if you're going to be using Wi-Fi, insert the microSD card back into your computer. Under boot, there's a file called system.cfg that you need to open. I used macOS's built-in text edit, but really any text editor like Notepad++ will work fine. In this file, we are looking for the section that says Wi-Fi name and Wi-Fi password. Enter your network name and password inside of the parentheses, double checking the spelling, the case, and that there are no extra spaces. Then save the file, eject the microSD card, and plug it into your Bigtree Tech Pi 1.2 board. Next, power on the Pi using the power terminal or USB and give it a minute or two to connect to your network. You should see it pop up as Big Tree Tech CB1 on your router, which is where you're also going to get its IP. Plugging that IP address into our browser, we can see that Clipper Host is up and running, and you can now move on to configuring your printer for Clipper. One last thing that I want to cover is SSH. When you flash the default image for the CB1 or BigTreeTech 1.2, the default login, username, and password is both BQ and all lowercase. On Mac to connect, I open up the terminal and I type SSH BQ at the IP address that was assigned to my Pi 1.2. If you do get a warning the first time you connect, just type yes and then enter BQ and all lowercase again as your password to connect to the Pi 1.2. Since this is technically a full Linux computer, leaving the default username and password is really not a good idea and it takes just a second to change. To do this, enter PASSWD into the terminal and it will ask you for your current password, which again is BQ in all lowercase. Then it will ask you for a new password that you'll need to verify. Just like that, you change the password from its default, which is just always a good idea. And that has been the Big Tree Tech Pi 1.2. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions you had about that board and maybe helped you decide if this is going to be the best option for your printer upgrade or your printer build. If you do have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And if I don't have the answer to that question, as always, I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to try to get that answer for you. Over on the Modbot Army channel, we are currently building a Trident and this is the Cyborg Trident, which came with an orange pie. So we're going to try using the orange pie, but if it ends up giving us any issues, I'm going to throw the Big Tree Tech Pi 1.2 into that Trident build. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome awards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.